The GB News pub is open, thank goodness for that. It's Talking Pints, and I'm joined by Lawrence Kenwright from Liverpool. Hotelier, entrepreneur, cheers. Cheers. Welcome. Reading through your life history, Lawrence, reminded me a bit of the Frank Sinatra song. <laughs> That's life, you know, riding high in April, <laughs> shot down in May, <laughs> and you've lived this amazing roller coaster. Sure. Uh, and we're, we're going to get on and talk about Signature Living, this extraordinary hotel concept that you've got, which clearly is very successful, though the pandemic and the lockdown didn't make it easy. No. But you started in pretty humble beginnings mm -hmm. in, in Walton. Um, you dropped out of school, even though you could have done well. And you began shoveling manure. This was your first job. It was. Well, at the time, um, we had a bit of a debacle going on between uh, Derek Hatton and Margaret Thatcher. I remember, yeah. And so do I. Yeah. So I left school at the tender age of 15, before my exams, uh, because, you know, the son of a doctor, my dad said, just get a job, any job. So I ended up shoveling, full as air. Um, but Liverpool at the time was um, on a real low. Um, and if you'd have said to me, you know, 20 years, 30 years ago, that Liverpool would be a top five tourist destination, um, I'd have laughed. And I think everyone else that I knew would have laughed. Uh, but at that time, when I was 15 or 16, shoveling full of earth, um, with 100,000 people leaving Liverpool because they couldn't find a job. Yeah. You know, Liverpool was what in a was very, that? very uh, serious state. Boys from the Black Staff, give us a job, give us a, give us a give job, us a and job, all that. Yeah. 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 And, and it was seen to be a very bleak place. It didn't seem to be, it was. It was... A, a horrendous place to get a job. It was a horrendous place to try and carve out some form of career. You know, I'm son of a docker, son of a coat worker. Uh, my dad lost his leg very early on, um, so we lived on invalid, invalidity benefits for many, many years. So to get a job was just the, the, the yeah. epitome of your life, you know, to get a job. So you get a job, you get on the ladder, you become a van lad. You And, and where, where, does this, where does this entrepreneurial flair that you've developed come from? I think fear of failure is probably the main track to ensure. But how did you get you... started? If you, I mean, because you know, there must be lots of people out there, young people out there today, who think, "How? What do I do? What, 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 how do you start?" Well, I think you, you've got to be born with a certain amount of tenacity because it's it's like you know, you, you, you start off, you try and raise funds. It's really difficult to raise funds, especially in Liverpool 20, 30 years ago. But then once you start to gain some traction, and, and with me, it was taking on an apartment and then going to two, then to three, and then gaining a great opportunity with all deadly so buildings. Borrowing money, borrowing money. Well, Liverpool is, is a strange place. That Liverpool obviously had that debacle with um, the fallout between yeah. Hatton and, and Thatcher. But what happened to Liverpool was it was then bereft of funding for many, many years, and that funding went to lead to Manchester and didn't come to Liverpool. So Liverpool was left with all of the old list of buildings that were knocked down in Leeds and Manchester to make way for their gregarious buildings that they put up. Liverpool actually then uh, had a huge benefit of using those stunning, amazing buildings. So Liverpool now, top five tourist destination that it is. I mean, the Victorians built Liverpool beautifully. All, all, all built on the Victorians, uh, but left to fall into severe dereliction. Yeah. So I came along not truly understanding the development world, but, but really understanding how to turn a deadlift building into a commercial entity um, by giving it a new set of clothes. It was never meant to be a hotel, but it's very, very difficult when you've got a great two-star listed building that was built to be an office block mm. to then try and turn it into a hotel. So then you have Why all hotels? hotels. Why hotels? Um, I think, well, I've I done apartments and I've done hotels, but hotels because... Uh, there is not just only a bricks and mortar valuation to a hotel, but there's also an EBITDA valuation to a hotel. So the multiplication of profits uh, would give a better valuation to the overall building. But you have the added complication of having to trade it, which obviously brings yep. its own complication. Yeah. So you start to build everything up, you start to build a property empire, then it all goes wrong again. Well, you know, when, when you go into, um, I, I think the start of, of it all going wrong for me was, was Brexit. So that's when it really went wrong for me. Um, because? Well, obviously, the, the country voted to, to leave, um, and I absolutely agree with that. I think where we made a huge mistake as politicians is that we had the House of Parliament going against government, and that spelled um, a disaster to the income and investors that come so into the country. So three and a half years of, of, of 
of effectively Parliament not honouring the result. Well, it was cascading onwards, wasn't it? So th that noise got more and more sinister as time went on. And as Parliament went against governments, I think it was in the August, um, it was literally like you could hear the screeching of the brakes of the money stopping to come into the country. Right. And, you know, we're a small country, aren't we? But we're a massive fundraiser. You know, a lot of money gets parked in this yeah. country. Yeah. That stopped pretty much overnight until the election was won on the 12th or the 13th of yeah. December. When that happened then, it was, well, everyone's away. So in January... Don't worry, the money's going to start coming in again. And then something happens. And then we have the pandemic. Yeah. And, uh, and that derailed everyone, because that was originally, uh, let's not worry about it, you know, we're, we're going to, you know, three weeks' time, we're, we're going to open up again. And I had a lot of fractional ownership partners, five or six hundred of them, right round the country, right, right round the world. And um, some of them um, didn't want to listen, um, didn't want to wait until we opened up again. So we, we had to put part of the business to administration. Yeah. Um, but luckily for us, when we opened on the, on the 4th of July again, uh, we decided that tourism wasn't going to be here because the streets were bare. So we, instead of having a hotel, a standard hotel room, we then started selling events with beds. So then we started putting, um, say, three or 400 people on the roof of, of the Shankly Hotel site. Yeah. Uh, and those people then, who would be local... Clearly a Liverpool, a, a Liverpool supporter. No, I'm an Everton supporter. Are you? Well, why the Shankly Hotel, then? Uh, because that's where the money was. <laughs> <laughs> on Twitter. Cats out of the bag, I tell you. <laughs> no, but if Liverpool, if Liverpool win, the city um, absolutely flourishes, you know, um, and certainly when they win the league and the European yeah. Cups. Sadly, as a blue, um, that's yeah. not going to happen. So, uh, as a scouser, first and foremost, um, I'm all about the city doing well. Yeah, so you create big roof terror. So you almost become a lifestyle, Yeah. as opposed to where a commercial traveller stays or whatever it is. Let's have a look. Let's have a look at a clip um, of, the sort of, of, of the sort of hotel rooms that you've got going now, because they are... Here we are, the cave. Talk us through this. So the, the look caves... At this, look at this. It's extraordinary. That's a basement... Um, cluster of rooms which has one room in there that has 28 beds but you know it's sold out for 12 months in advance every weekend gone 28 beds in one room 28 bed spaces so 14 double beds right so what kind of events take place there Lawrence Ken right <laughs> you will be getting invited to <laughs> <laughs> so the, the world's changed so hotels um, like Liverpool's got 9,000 beds uh, and if you have one or two people go into those hotels, then they're the experts for that. Anything over that, we feel we're the experts. And if you look at social media and the fact now that there are more groups than ever before because we are socially connected, and if you think we're super connected now, we're going to be super, super connected in the future. So, therefore, that super connectivity brings about more friendships, more... more... So, let's just say um, hemp parties coming on. Yep. Um, and, 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 and the lady puts out on, on her social media, hi, guys, uh, I'm having my hen party in Liverpool, whenever it's going to be. And before you know it, you've got people from university who haven't seen for 10 years, but they don't want to come on their own, they want to come with two of the mates. So then someone else wants to come. And it's really strange when you see them all coming together for the first time, but they're sharing the same room. So there's a shift of what's acceptable and what's not. So our main competitor really is someone like Travelodge, because that's where most of the groups go to. Yep. But we're not selling a bed anymore. Well, you look much more exciting than travel lodge, so you've got to tell so, it. So we're not but... selling a bed, we're selling an experience. And a, what we call a boastful play. So every room, I'm going to get a bit complicated here, every room's got three sharp edges. The sharp edges lead to a backdrop for the picture to go on their social media. We know they'll naturally navigate towards those backdrops. And, of course, the social media brings the more business in and... In a peer-to-peer -peer way. So... Rather than me going on TV saying, hey, guys, have you seen my hotel rooms? Well, you're going to say, well, you, you can't say that. That's being commercial. What we're doing here is we're allowing or wanting the customers to boast about their stay, yeah. which jumps into the garden of acceptability, which means that they're going to want to stay, irrespective of whatever says on TripAdvisor. But or it must get out of control sometimes, the kind of situation like that. No, it doesn't. Um, so uh, every uh, group that comes in, there's, a, there's one guest that has to... Give us their credit card. Right. So, yeah. so if anything damage goes wrong, or... yeah. So that, they tend to be like the policemen within that room, so that doesn't really happen that much. So lockdown over. Let's hope we're not going back. Parts of Europe are, which is quite scary to watch. Um, you must be making a fortune with this. 
Well, I think, I think we've got a bit of a winter of discontent because a lot of people don't really, you know, want to come out now. There's, there's still the older age groups that are a little bit, still a bit worried about yeah. coming out. Yeah. So your midweek punt is not there. Your weekend is, we're 100% every weekend, but we yeah. used to be 85% during the week. Now we're about 70% during the week. So it has come down. We're doing far better than anyone else. So a lot of those main brand hotels that are out there that are waiting for their business users to come back, but now they're Zooming. So if you've got somewhere like Manchester yeah. and London, their midweek uh, and their rev part is the same as their weekend. Midweek, same as weekend, because they have a huge uh, amount of businessmen wanting to use their hotels during the yeah. week. Yeah. Liverpool's never had that. Liverpool lost that battle to Manchester a long time ago. Manchester have the main offices. Yeah. Liverpool yeah, don't yeah, have yeah. it. So Liverpool's become a tourist destination. Leisure destination. And, yeah. and they become well, the, the... Well, the I must come and visit. It, this is remarkable. It looks amazing. It looks like fun. Well, you're more than welcome to come and visit the Shankly whenever you wish. Well, I look forward to it, because the previous mayor of Liverpool, Joe Anderson, said I, I wouldn't be welcome to set foot in the city, but I can come to your hotel, yeah? Yeah, of course you can. Well, that was Lawrence Cairn, right? And I think he's, he's reinvented hotels in just the most extraordinary way. And we thank him for coming on Talking Pines. Welcome to the GB News YouTube channel. You can watch us live 24 hours a day, catch up on your favorite shows, and join in the conversation in the comments below. Don't forget to subscribe and you'll never miss any of our exclusive content.